Hello everybody and welcome! The developers of Kerbal Space Program 2 gave us a nice present for the Halloween weekend. Episode 4 of the KSP2 developer documentary. This one is called Celestial Architecting and boy does it deliver on that title. Aside from the fact that I approve of creative director Nate Simpson's new facial hair, obviously, obviously. Let's talk about 8 new reveals for Kerbal Space Program 2. Before we dive into this though, please leave a like and comment after you have watched this video. I know that most of you that watch my KSP2 videos are not subscribed to my channel, so if you want to stay up to date on the game's development, maybe you could change this because I will post updates as soon as I can get to whenever new information comes out. I'd really appreciate your subscription. Now, let's get on with it. All these worlds are yours. We know that Kerbal Space Program 2 will offer a plethora of new planets and moons to explore because there will be interstellar exploration, enabling players to finally leave their home solar system. In the developer's video we get to know a few new celestial bodies in addition to the ones we have already seen in the past. Based on all the trailers and episodes released so far, this is the list I was able to put together. Gloomo. This is a Saturn analog and we have seen it in the first trailer as well as some of the other episodes. The current iteration looks very colorful and since Saturn was my favorite as a child, I can't wait to visit it. It also has some moons, one of which was also present in the first trailer. Merble. It appears to be an icy little thing, maybe this is some in-game footage of it, but we don't really know yet. Gurdama. This is a planet that was already presented a few weeks back, but in the documentary episode Nate Simpson elaborates on some more details surrounding it. Apparently it is supposed to be a planet similar to Earth or within the game Kerbin, early in its history, just as water was beginning to form. And within the rings it appears to have grown a moon, which is currently called Donk. Which is a name that may change, but I wouldn't mind leaving it that way. Char. This is the innermost planet of a system that is called the Debdeb system. It is also home to the already mentioned Glumo and Gurdama. Little is known about this one except that it looks extremely hot. Like literally hot, not in the sense that it's very attractive. Well, maybe it also has high gravity. Anyhow, it's going to be a challenge keeping your cool with that hottie. Scott. This one was just briefly mentioned during the video, but with its unusual shape and composition, it is going to be quite a tricky one to land on. If you have played the Outer Planets mod for the original Kerbal Space Program, you might have visited Ovok, a moon of Sarnus, another Saturn analog in that game. I visited that one during my Ozymandias KSP video series a long time ago. Rask and Rusk. We have met these binary planets in the first announcement trailer. This time around we have seen more how they will look like in the game. Seems like landing on them is going to be tricky, not just because of the superheated parts of the surfaces, but also because both have gravitational pull and it's going to be interesting how that will influence orbits around these two. Maybe we can do figure 8 orbits here? We do know that there won't be a general n-body physics model within the game, but that there will be some special sauce whipped up for this pair. Oven. This ringed super-Earth was already presented a while back. It supposedly has multiple times the gravity of Kerbin, but little else is known as of right now. Puff. This fun little eyeball planet popped up during a show and tell video a while back and we haven't seen it since, but I certainly hope we will encounter it in the game. This is also going to be an interesting place to visit, to say the least. La Pat. This is either a moon or a planet, not sure yet, but its name has shown up in the development software and it appears to have vegetation. Looks like a lathe won't stay the only habitable body outside of Kerbin. 
To be fair, it could also be that this is just a test bed to experiment with stuff and will never be a real thing we will see in the game. So, we already know that there will be a lot of new places to visit and explore, which is exciting in and of itself. To paraphrase a quote from Arthur C. Clarke's 2010 Odyssey 2, all these worlds are yours. Use them together, use them in peace. Using them together is a good segue to the next item on my list. Multiplayer! We didn't really get any hard details around the multiplayer promise from two years ago, but we got confirmation that multiplayer is still in active development. Nate Simpson mentioned a meeting with the multiplayer designer of the team where Gurdama's Moon Donk was talked about. If the team wasn't confident that they can get a good multiplayer experience successfully off the ground, I am sure that this bit confirming active development in that area would not have been in the episode at all. The developers are very good at staying tight-lipped about the game. No comment. I have no comment. I'm not currently able to give any specifics around multiplayer. You're not talking about that. I have no answer to that question right now. We don't know what features multiplayer will entail, but it appears that it will tie into the interstellar aspect of the game and not remain something for just the home system. But yeah, overall multiplayer is still shrouded in mystery. Speaking of mysteries, a reason to visit Drez. Senior designer Tom Venita mentioned a cool mountain range with goodies stashed in it while talking about Drez. The Drez doesn't exist meme and never visiting Drez joke, even within the loading screen of the first Kerbal Space program, inspired the developers to make planetary exploration more interesting, something I have advocated for in the past as well. Exactly how the game will motivate us to explore more is not really known at the moment, but I am glad that the problem of driving around on planets being a bit boring in the original game is something that the developers want to remedy in the sequel. I hope there are going to be some cool things on each planet that will blow us away. And there might be some other things blowing. Weather system. Take a close look at this visual of Kerbin. See that hurricane-like formation in the southern hemisphere? Now take a look at what we can find here in the screen with all the Lapat details. There appears to be something weather-related called Wind Zone. Could this be a hint for working weather systems for each celestial body with an atmosphere? Will this be something that actually influences aerodynamics while traveling through said atmosphere? Or will this be more of a visual thing to make it look more interesting? I guess we have to find out, but let me know in the comments what you think about that. I mentioned visuals, and that is actually my next item. Gorgeous graphics. Take a look at this. This shot of a spacecraft above what is probably Jules Moon Val is just gorgeous. The lighting, the reflections off of the surface, the lens flare. We already knew that KSP2 was going to be a big step up from the previous game, but it seems like we're going to get some real eye candy once we can finally get our hands on that game. Some of this will be made possible thanks to more detailed terrain scatter as shown by the artists in the recent video. There is also something else here, the exhaust plume of the rocket engine. Not only does it look magnificent, it is also an accurate depiction of what a rocket exhaust looks like in the vacuum of space. You see, when in an atmosphere the surrounding pressure compresses the gas being propelled out of the nozzle, creating the familiar plumes we all know. But the higher up you go, the lower the pressure is going to be and the gases can expand. This leads to what we can see here, a wide exhaust cone behind the nozzle. You could already get this effect in the first game when using the mod Real Plumes, but what this actually leads me into is this. Scientific accuracy. While KSP2 is still going to be wonky and fun from the looks of it, the developers are still adamant about keeping it rooted in real science wherever possible. Take for instance Minmus, one of Kerbin's moons and a destination that many players will be familiar with. 
In the lore of the original game it was made of ice, with some people even believing it was made of ice cream. However, with Kerbin's distance from the sun it would be impossible for ice to exist for an extended period of time. But they still wanted to have Minmus look as if it was made of ice. So they found a scientifically sound solution. Minmus is now made of glass instead of ice. While that is rather unusual, it is at least not impossible compared to a moon made of ice so close to the sun. Speaking of close, moving closer to planets. A significant portion of the current episode is dedicated to how players will transition from being far away from a planet to landing on its surface. Senior graphics engineer Eric De Felice goes into a lot of detail how the team is trying to solve the problem of rendering only what is relevant to the current viewpoint, so that the player's computer can cope with what it has to display. That's why you will have more details popping up as soon as you get closer to the surface. We can see in the footage shown that the terrain features appear to change when you move over them. But to be honest, in that pre-alpha state that was presented, it appears a bit jarring to me from time to time. I do hope this gets smoothed out a little when the game gets closer to release. The exact release date is still a secret. We have only heard 2022 so far. Most likely the second half. But speaking of secrets... The Kraken appears! At the end of the video there is another something more chapter, similar to what we have seen during a previous episode which was released in May. As was the case back then, it contains a secret message hidden within this audio. Back in May, some clever people decoded this out of it. A diagram similar to the Arecibo message, based on what was hidden in the audio. Now we got this! It seems like the Kraken wants to come out and play with the rocket sent from the third planet of the solar system depicted on top. Who knows, maybe KSP2 will have some more in-game acknowledgement of this mythical creature that can tear apart the fabric of space and time and a lot of players' creations while doing so. So that's it for this time. Eight new things we learned from the latest developer documentary episode. Did I miss something? What stood out to you when you were watching that video? Let me know in the comments down below or join me on my Discord server so we can have a chat about that. The link is in the description. I don't know about you guys, but I for one am very excited for Kerbal Space Program 2 and can't wait to learn more about it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching, goodbye.